look how easy it is to take a custom GPT off of the ChatGPT platform and onto your own custom AI app. All right, I'm gonna find a custom GPT here. In a previous video, we looked at Cartonize Yourself. It turns photos into Pixar style illustrations. You upload a photo of yourself. This is a stock photo that I grabbed from pexels.com and then it shoots out a Pixar-like drawing of that image. We looked at the back end prompt and it's not doing anything special. You can even see that it's not exactly the same person. This man has a beard, while this image does not. They're both crossing their arms, they both have a necklace and a watch. Actually, this photo doesn't even have a necklace, and I predict it's using a mixture of GPT vision, so it's looking at this photo and describing it, and then turning that prompt into a Dolly 3 image. I wanna take that custom GPT to the next level. I have a few ideas for improvement. And the good thing about taking your custom GPT off of ChatGPT is you have total control over the features. I'm gonna use their API to output exactly what I want. With your own app, you have full control. We're gonna use Bubble for this. And first, I'm gonna to go to Plugins, API Connector, I'm gonna expand the OpenAI API calls. And in order for this custom GPT to work, you're gonna need two API calls. You're gonna need GPT Vision and Dolly 3. Expanding GPT Vision. The only difference between this call and a GPT-4 call is you're using the model GPT-4 Vision Preview. And instead of sending text as an input, you're sending an image URL. We also have the Dolly 3 call. This is the JSON body. I've taught how to make these calls in other videos on my channel. Now that we have the two API calls, we can start building out the page. So just like in ChatGPT, we're gonna need an input box and that input needs to accept an image because our users are gonna upload a photo of themselves and we're gonna send that through GPT Vision. Bubble has an input specifically designed for pictures and that is called the picture uploader. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drag it onto the page Let's center it, and I'm gonna make it 50 pixels from the top. Let's make it 400 pixels wide, and then 200 pixels tall. Next, we're gonna to need to store the results in a data type. So I'm gonna go over to data here. Let's make a new data type. I'm gonna call it cartoon, click create. In this cartoon data type, I'm gonna create a new field. We're gonna call this images. The field type will be image and it's gonna be a list. Why I'm making it a list is because I wanna add a feature. Instead of spitting out one cartoon image of the photo, I wanna spit out four images, each with a different style. We're upgrading this custom GPT. Let's hit create. Now back in design, I'm going to add a repeating group onto the page. Let's drag it in here. You can see it has four rows by default. Instead of that, I'm gonna make it one row, but the columns is gonna be four. So we're gonna display the four images down here. For the content type, it's gonna be image because we're displaying images. For the data source, I'm gonna go back into data. Let's go to the user data type. I'm gonna create a new field. Let's call this cartoons. The field type is gonna be cartoon, and then it's gonna be a list. So each user will be able to run this custom GPT multiple times and then save their results to their profile. Let's hit create. I'm gonna go back into design. And now for the data source, I can go current users, cartoons, last item images. So on the page, it will only display the last generation that they did. We can always create a separate page that houses their past results but on this specific page, we only wanna show the most recent. Let's center it on the page. For the cell container layout, we'll just go column. I'm gonna make it 50 pixels from the element above it. I don't know what I wanna do with the width and the height yet. So let's grab an image element. I'm gonna put it in the first cell. I'm gonna to go to layout. We're gonna keep element aspect ratio fixed. It's gonna be a square, so that's one by one. I don't wanna make it too small. Let's try 200 pixels, which means I'll have to spread out the repeating group. It will stretch it as wide as possible, but we're gonna fit width to content. We're also fitting the height to the content. So I'll just make the minimum height 200 just in case. And I don't want them stacked across each other. So let's make a margin. 
we're just gonna go 10 pixels to the right and 10 pixels to the left. Let's stretch out the page a bit more to see what's going on. And then we'll add some space to the bottom of the page, 50 pixels from the bottom. For the image in the repeating group, I'm gonna double click on it. It needs to be a dynamic image. I'm gonna go insert dynamic data. It's gonna be the current cells image. And as soon as you do that, it fills that image in every one of the cells. So now we have four. The run mode is rescale. Let's just make it zoom. There we go. And now we can start building out the workflow. So in workflow, I'm going to add an event, hover over elements. When an input's value is changed, that's going to be the picture uploader input. It's going to make an API call. I'm going to go to plugins, GPT vision. For the body text, I'm going to write, describe this image in as much detail as possible so that we can recreate it. For the image URL, I'm gonna insert dynamic data. It's gonna be this picture uploader's value URL. Because of the way Bubble stores image URLs, we have to manually add HTTPS colon to the URL. That will make sure the URL is in the proper format being sent to GPT Vision. Next, we have to take that result and make an image with Dolly 3. So I'm gonna to click to add an action. Let's go down to plugins. OpenAI Dolly 3. The prompt is going to be make a Pixar like drawing of the following image. Then we're grabbing the result of step one, which is the API call to the GPT vision model. I'm going to right click, copy, paste in a new action. Instead of Pixar, I'm going to do Disney like. Let's do it again. Copy, paste. For the next one, I'm going to write 3D clay drawing. Right click, copy, right click, paste. And the last one's gonna be anime. So we have four different styles, four different images. Now we have to save all of those results to the database. So I'm gonna to click to add an action. I'm gonna go data, create a new thing. The type is gonna be a cartoon. We're gonna go images, add, the result of step two's data, first items URL. And I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it into step three. Then I'm gonna click on this arrow. I'm going to go data, make changes to a thing. We are changing the result of step three. That's the cartoon. And we're going to go images, add the result of step four. It's data, first items, URL. Let's do that again after step six. Data, make changes to a thing. We're going to change that same cartoon. Writing images, add the result of step six's URL. And let's do it one more time at the end here, make changes to a thing, do the result of step seven, images, add, this time the result of step eight's data, first item URL. Now if Dolly 3 allowed us to create multiple images at a time, this workflow would be a lot simpler, it'd only be three steps, but because Dolly 3 only creates one image at a time, we have to run it through multiple steps. This is another reason why you need to do this within your own custom AI app and not within ChatGPT, because there's no way to add extra steps within the ChatGPT interface. For the last action, we're gonna go data, make changes to a thing. We are going to change the current user, and the field is we're gonna go cartoons, add, and we'll go the result of step three, so that first cartoon that we added. To make it easier visually, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it after step three, just so you can visualize the workflow correctly. Let's walk through it first, GPT vision. We look at the image that the user uploaded. We ask it to describe this image in as much detail as possible. Then we make our first Dolly 3 image. It's gonna be a Pixar style. We create a new cartoon data type. This will hold the results and we add that first image to the cartoon data type. Then we make a change to the current user. We add that cartoon data type that we just created. Then we make a new image with Dolly 3. We add that image to the cartoon data type. We make another image with Dolly 3. Add that image again. Make the fourth image with Dolly 3. Add that last image. So at the end, we have four images in different animation styles. And now it's time to test it out. Here is our page. I'm going to click to upload an image. And I grab this one of a woman wearing glasses standing on a city street. Let's see how close we can get the images to look like this one. And here are the results. 
I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna open images in new tab. This is the first one, here's the second one, this is the third one, it's supposed to be clay, and the fourth one, which is anime. Not bad, but I think we could do better. If I was seriously considering turning this into an app, I would fiddle around with the prompt a bit more to get my results exactly how I want them. I'd also block the user from opening up these photos, maybe only charge them if they want to purchase a full package, instead of four, maybe do 20. You could create a credit system or a subscription service with an upgrade button. I'd also create a login page so only registered users could use your custom AI app. We dive way deeper into this topic in the online course, how to build your own custom AI app. Join the first cohort today. Click the link in the description below. I'd love to have you on board. And if you like this video, I have two more on the screen right now. I've catered both of them to your watch history. Click one of them, give it a watch. I'll see you in there. Peace.